Greetings, I'm John the Spirit, I have many small projects and I have no idea how many I'll get to in this episode, and welcome to New Omnifactory Super Shorts. Project number one, move the input hatch for this blast furnace making a annealed copper to the other side and to the left of that side so that we can merge blast furnace walls together. Done! Project number two, make 64 cooper nickel coil blocks. Those require going to be eight stacks of cooper nickel, um, which will be four stacks of nickel. One nickel coin equates to three nuggets, so three nickel coins is equivalent to one ingot, which is three stacks of slime matter. What we'll do is fluid extract these. Why am I doing this? To make red alloy, um, because you can make it um, with the least amount of redstone using annealed copper in a blast furnace. I'm going to perform my redstone fluid extraction with GASP, LV, because I've determined that the numbers are right, and I don't really want to use a bunch of random MV um, machines anyway. This is what happens when you remove a filter from a conduit before you turn off insert. I don't even care about resistors anymore, so I'm just going to throw those away. Unbelievable. And redstone will now be fluid extracted. Two MV energy input hatches. Remember, when in doubt, batchcraft. Alright, we've got a blast furnace ready. We'll insert annealed copper ingots, and then we filter this fluid filter on molten redstone or destabilized redstone, and all I have to do is just get this one to extract on fluid always active. And surprisingly slowly, we will get our red alloy one by one. And then I'll do something very, very strange. We're making fine red alloy wires as, yeah, as soon as I set this to insert, and then we should get them. And then it's time for our next weird project, which will require a lot of stainless steel, but I think I should still have tons of it over here. Yes, I do. To make our first tier 4 circuits, we need SMD diodes, which require platinum wire. Um, you can get platinum like this. A diamond lens with silicon wafers will make RAM wafers, which can create RAM, which we're also going to need. We'll need 4 refined processor arrays, which means we're going to need 16 RAM and 16 vibrant alloy wires, among other things. What do you mean I have 3 stacks of ender fluid conduits? Yes, folks, I got tired of making them all the time. Here are my fine platinum wires. Apparently, making SMD diodes is very slow. Luckily, you get 32 per craft. And I'm now making my refined processor arrays. And then, with the addition of these stainless steel frames, I'll get my very first Tier 4 circuits. Behold, our advanced assembly machine 2 which I have hooked up to two energetic alloy cables so I can give it the four amps of MV it needs to be HV. I filtered this fluid solidifier on epoxy resin, and then we'll take the epoxy sheets and put them into this chemical reactor. I filtered one epoxy sheet and one copper foil using a limited item filter, and now all we need to do is put in a fluid filter on sulfuric acid, and we will be ready to make our epoxy sheets. Excuse me, not epoxy sheets, but epoxy circuit boards. And now, the limited item filter that will make all our dreams come true. We are going to get our first micro circuits. Hello? As soon as I said this to extract, always active. Yes! Wow, should I just end this episode right here? Oh my gosh. These are so inexpensive, I love it. They drive me to get the fourth and final tier 3 circuit. Unfortunately, I need titanium to do this, so this isn't actually as easy as you think it is. But since that works so fast, we get a bonus project. Passively turning microcircuits into microprocessors because I am evil. Just kidding, I'm probably just going to make small coils somewhere and then use those to make microprocessors. Why? Because I need them for AE2 patterns. Where is that? Where is it? Where is it? But first, I have a tall boy buffer where all of my buffer things are going to go. Or at least some of them. I'd like to buffer a lot in order to prepare for the creative portable tank. But I don't want Ender.io to constantly be trying to check if it can put items into this set of drawers, not knowing what type of items actually could go into them. So I've created an advanced item filter with all the items that go into this drawer, so that Ender.io knows what items can go in. It doesn't try to insert, for example, I don't know, fine silver wires. Obviously, the fine silver wires won't get into these drawers, but the Ender.io kind of will check for all possible items extracting in the network to see if they can go in these drawers, and I don't like that. Alright, everything is now getting shoved happily into their places. And did I say I'm going to make blank patterns? I'm actually not going to make them right now. I've decided on new, different things I'm doing for all my stuff. Just like for fluids before, I'm going to have a specific channel for all bufferings, for, for pouring things into buffers, and that's going to be the blue channel. That way I won't accidentally feed my drawers with the items that I'm pulling out of them, which would be a waste of time and probably just make lag. Now that I have all these buffered, it's time for me to work on my next project, which is going to be a bunch of passive alloys. 
Right now, the alloys I most want are Electrum, Steel, maybe Electrical Steel, and then End Steel and Dark Steel. Dark Steel I can't do quite yet, but I'm going to have an episode that's going to prepare us to automate things like Void Crystals and Soul Sand, so we can get Solarium, which I'll also need for some stuff. Now I'm going to do this with Applied Energistics too, and the reason is that if you leave a bunch of items in the buffer of a Greg Tech machine, even if the output is full, the Greg Tech machine will check on a regular basis to see if there are to see if there's a recipe that it can do with the items that it has. So for example, this fluid solidifier is constantly checking if it can solidify polyvinyl chloride even though it's full. This is a problem, it causes lag. We're going to have a drawer controller right here that's going to have all of our um, all of our drawers for the alloys. I'm going to have a storage bus right here that's going to be on the drawer controller, and this storage bus is going to allow Applied Energistics 2 to store items rather than in cells and drives inside of our drawer system. I'm going to partition it on only specific types of items. ME level emitters will check how many items are currently in the network and send a redstone signal based on that. I'm going to use a special cover for Greg Tech machines called the machine controller that turns off the machine when it already has a redstone signal. I guess I've already shown you that in this system here. Did I just make 64 machine controllers? Yes. Am I about to make 64 ME level emitters? Yes. Am I currently in the process of making 64 MV robot arms for interfaces? Absolutely yes. Do I have enough aluminium for this? Definitely not. Am I making it fast enough? Absolutely not. But this EV blast furnace will run it a little bit faster. I have to turn 5 stacks of aluminum ingots into 10 stacks of aluminum rods, and I kind of want to make another lathe at this point. Aluminum is not going fast enough. A buffer would have helped me if I were to have it, and so I'm going to create a buffer now um, right away into the plus section that I'm going to put all my alloys in, at least for now. If I need to move it, I'll move it. I am two stacks of aluminum rods away from being able to make 64 robot arms. Unfortunately, the interfaces are going to require another 13 stacks of aluminum, so that's not going to happen in the evening that I'm doing this. Alright, this is it. Every stack of an item requires nine stacks of things in my inventory, so we'll start with one stack of motors, one stack of motors, two stacks of motors, three stacks of motors, a stack of pistons, 53 and then 11 robot arms. To buffer more aluminium, I'm going to install a conveyor module to this output bus to make it automatically output. Right-click on the face to which you want to install it to install it. Right-click on the face with a screwdriver to configure it. It's already on export mode, so you can see that the aluminium is slowly leaving the output bus. And now, with the power of all these resources, I shall proceed to make 64 ME inter- Oh no. There we go. And now we'll place our five wires, and then I should have my five alloy smelters in my inventory as well. And I'll make an energy acceptor. To increase the efficiency of your resources, you can stick glass cables in a assembly machine with rubber to cover them, and then you can turn them into conduits with conduit binder. Things like ME level emitters or storage buses, however, which are half blocks, as you can see from this level emitter, um, do not connect to conduits. They have to connect to the actual glass cables, so you can't always save that much. I'm going to place a machine controller on each and every one of these alloy smelters and then five level emitters facing down, and then I'll use an electric piston and an interface to make storage buses. And although only a normal glass cable will connect to the storage bus, I can connect up conduits like this, as a, again, to save resources. I've put limited item filters into each of these alloy smelters, and I'm going to put an energy acceptor right here to turn on the network. These will all extract on buffering blue. I'll put an advanced item filter in here for hopefully future increase. Because of all the things steel is used for, I'm setting two limited item filters um, for two of the alloy smelters. And then I'll put steel ingots into the level emitter and say that when levels are above or equal to, let's say, um, 2,000 steel, this redstone level emitter will emit. So right now it's just making steel happily, and we'll do the same thing for this one. I'm told to stock about 2,000 electrum as well. And I'll probably cap my electrical steel at like 512 or something like that. To make end steel, we need dark steel ingots and end stone dust. End stone dust we can get from end stone, and end stone we can craft from extraterrestrial matter, ender pearl, and sandstone. I'll filter this top mechanical crafter on sand, and then set it to make sandstone by using the um, input recipe from JEI. And then I've set up four ender pearls and four extraterrestrial matter as limited item filters on this end stone. And then of course I'll set these to extract always active. All right, end stone is now being created. I'm going to hold off on making end steel for a little bit because I'm still trying to build up my steel stockpile and electrical steel goes slightly faster than steel does. But then again, that's why I have 
two steel alloy smelters, so I could be convinced. The main point of N-Steel is that it is the EV wire, um, and that it's actually a much cheaper alternative to vibrant and uh, energetic alloy conduits for powering your base. Oh, I made a fool's move. Turns out you need dark steel to get N-Steel, um, so that'll come in another episode. One thing I can do is centrifuge endstone for a lot of great free stuff, particularly tungstate, which will let me get tungsten, uh, but that's for later. Oh no, I filled up on methane. Whatever shall I do? I think for my last buffering project, I want to turn carbon dioxide into carbon and oxygen, so one, I have extra oxygen for stuff, and two, I have extra carbon for stuff. This advanced electrolyzer I just installed will get carbon dioxide filtered into it, and then we'll start getting the materials. And then I'll extract the oxygen on blue, and it'll go straight into its newly partitioned cell, just for that purpose. I'm considering deleting excess methane right now, because I'm creating it faster than I'm using it in my hydrogen maker. So yes, goodbye extra methane. Hopefully the rest of it survives to enter this advanced chemical reactor too, and continue to build up my slowly depleting hydrogen supplies. Meanwhile, I'll extract my carbon as soon as I filter a new drawer on carbon. Now that we have the power of stockpiling, I think that's it for today's episode. In the next episode, we'll use a combination of Applied Energistics 2, Storage Drawers, and Ender I.O. to automate plates, wires, and rods. And so, by degrees, get ourselves the ability to create microminers. Whether or not I'm going to passively automate these is currently in question. If there's anything I'm going to be doing, it's to stock up all the types of plates and wires and rods and different materials that I need in order to be able to, to create it on the fly whenever I wish. We'll also update our iron recipe to use the vastly superior recipe that creates iron from one rotten flesh and four overworldian matter. Since rotten flesh comes from loop fabrications at a rate of 64 per pristine zombie matter, you can get many, many, many times the number of iron. I accidentally made too many zombie heads, but it's for a good cause, the cause of many limited item filters. All this is for the general goal of reducing, eventually, lag due to Greg Tech machines being full. I may have mentioned in the past that if they are full, and they even if, even if their buffers are full, they're still going to try and check if they can do a recipe, which is slow. So the more we can turn off machines when we're not using them, the better. The more we modularize in this way, the more machines we can turn off, the better. But yeah, as always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.